What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I've got something interesting for you guys. I've got a new spot welder. In here is the Meletrix spot welder all the way from Germany. Let's get on the bench, I'll tell you why I've got a new spot welder and well, we'll build it and have a look at it. So then guys, those of you that have been here before and are familiar with my channel, you know that I've been using this. This is the boss level custom spot welder. It's from a guy in South Korea and well, truth be told, I've made probably four or five batteries with this now. It's done several thousand welds. Um, and well, it's been really, really good. I really enjoy it. And I, you know, I just really started getting consistent results with this. Um, you can see here the, uh, the probe situation started to get a bit weird. Uh, and I've had to like, like readjust this several times. I use it with this Turnergy uh, 3S, uh, five amp hour, 40 to 50 C battery. And this has done, you know, this has gone through a lot of charge cycles now and it's got the tiniest amount of puffing on it and, you know, it's starting to look a little bit beat up, but it's been great, you know, it's it provides enough power, it can provide enough amps to do it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I even dropped solder on it once. You do definitely do not want to be dropping solder onto a charged LiPo battery, no way. But this has been fine. So the other day I was welding some nickel together. Luckily I wasn't actually welding to a battery. Um, and I'd done several welds um, and I always use the switch. So I have control of when the weld happens. So I'd weld, weld, weld. And then I touched the probes to the nickel and all of a sudden there was a massive blue spark, huge spark, um, smoke everywhere. I blew a huge hole in the nickel and this is now absolutely dead. Now this is a major problem for my channel guys because I build a lot of batteries um, and like I say, this has been a workhorse. It overheats chronically. Those of you are familiar with the welding piece, you'll know. I did put some heat sinks on it and that did help quite a bit but in the end this has killed itself and instead of trying to fix this or investigate I bought myself a new spot welder so in here I have the Meletrix spot welder this comes from Germany it was 145 euros 95 I think in the end with postage and I thought it'd be fun if we got all the bits out and had a look at it together. So I've already been in here uh, to have a quick look, um, but I didn't go too far. Just far enough for the missus to take the gummies that were in here for herself. Here we go, the Meletrix spot welder. DIY Arduino battery spot welder. So it's Arduino based again. Um, input voltage 10 to 14, recommended welding battery, car battery, or a LiPo battery 3S five amp hour with minimum 60C. We don't have a 60C battery, so that will be interesting to see what happens with this. For full quick start guide, assembly instructions are available at meletrix.com. We'll definitely be looking at that. The one good thing about this, guys, and the reason why I actually went for this in the end is this huge fuse, 300 amp slow blow fuse. The old one didn't have a fuse and that is why we ended up with it burning itself to bits. So at least this one's fused and if we get a problem that fuse is going to blow and this will be a lot easier to replace than the whole spot welder. So without further ado, I'm going to just going to remove this packaging and we'll have a look at the items that we've got. So there we go guys, that's the actual spot welder itself. Um, looks a little bit different although it's kind of similar to the old one. Um, same display in fact even but it just, it actually already looks much nicer. In here is the 3D printed case that comes with it. This one has a cooling fan, which is awesome. The last one didn't have a cooling fan, and that's definitely gonna help keep temperatures down. That looks like the fuse housing. It already comes with these probes. Um, they're nice, much nicer than the old ones. And these are individual probes, so you can choose the distance between them. And this one actually also comes with a foot, a foot switch. I'm not entirely sure if I like the idea of the foot switch. Certainly got a long enough cable. 
might end up modding something so that we use another type of switch, but it comes with a foot switch. If you're into that, that's pretty cool. That looks like the input cable and the fuse, which we've been through. So I'm gonna get the instructions up and we'll have a look at building this together. One thing I've got to say, guys, before we start this, is it does come with a comprehensive set of instructions, full color bullet point instructions on the internet. Top work, guys, I really do like that. We're gonna follow those now while we build this. Let's get back to it. Guys, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to separate these two halves of the PCB assembly um, so that we can start modifying it for the case. So I think we just gotta do that. There we go, and it's pretty obvious which way around it goes, so we can't actually mess that up. We've got to insert these four um, M3 25mm screws or bolts and just secure them with a nylock washer. Right, so we've got three more of those to do, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, so that's now done, and actually the next step was to install another four nuts on there. So they're all on there now. Um, and now we've got to rejoin these PCBs together. It's pretty easy because of the pins. One more thing, when you're screwing the nuts on, just be careful of these pins, you don't want to bend them. We'll just make this next step a little more tricky. So when we go in, we just make sure all the pins line up, which they do. So that's the two PCBs back together. Now we just need to adjust these nuts back out so that they touch this PCB, just tightening it. You just want them to lightly touch. And now we've got to put another four nuts and tighten this PCB down. Okay, next step apparently is to strip uh, five to seven millimeters of insulation from this random red silicon wire. So it's gonna do that. Job done. And now we prepare the foot switch. And as you can see guys, we're left with three wires now. This foot switch wants to be in the normally open position, i.e. when we press the foot switch, we want to close two of these wires. I don't know which ones are which. The, ins the instructions are quite vague. It says you can get a few different versions. So we'll just test it with a multimeter. I hope you appreciate it. This is quite tricky to show on camera. Red and white. Zero ohms when I press it and overload so we don't need the black wire and i'm actually gonna just get rid of we need red and white so guys in the kit is this cable assembly which is already stripped all we've got to do is solder these wires together so we can interface the foot switch with the pcb Right, that's working. So guys, next job is to prepare the case. Now it says in the instructions, and it's true, that you have to remove the supports from this 3D printed case. Now I don't know about you, but I think that's a bit of an ask really. If you're gonna use a 3D printed case, at least prepare it for your customers. I use 3D printed cases in some of my stuff, and I would never dream of sending something out with the supports on. Okay, next we've got to install some nuts in these holes that come in the kit. undo the bolt right okay next we're going to take the negative um, welding probe and we're going to attach it onto here this is the negative bus now it says in the kit it's very important that you put the negative on that piece and not on that piece right now we've got to shorten these wires on the cooling fan and strip a bit off it says shorten them to about 10 centimeters we're going to insert the fan that way around Oh, we finally get to, to fit the, uh, the module in. So that's in. So the next thing to do is take the silicon wire we prepared earlier and the red wire from the fan, and we've got to insert them into this um, terminal. So we twist them together. So now they're twisted together, they've got to go in here. So I've got to remove that. 
and now the black cable from the fan goes in the right hand side. I'm really happy this welder has a built in fan. I hope it's going to do the job and keep it cool. Right, next thing is the XT90 adapter. That's got to go on this side, like so. Just check everything's good. Battery's finished charging, we'll be able to test this in a minute. So that, that piece goes there. That does that. And then there's a little notch in the top piece here for the silicon wire. So that's going to come out there. Right now, finally, we can screw this bad boy together. So, so we're just going to clamp the case together while we screw the bolts in. And I go do that for all of these four, and I'll be back in a sec. This is now assembled. So don't screw these in too tight, guys, because it's 3D printed, it's PLA, you don't want to break it. So the last thing for the case is to put the 3D printed rotary knob on. So stick that on. It's a, it's a push and a rotate, that's pretty cool, that's good. All on. And now we put this whole assembly to one side. For we have to do the fuse assembly, the fuse case there. He uses impact font, same as me on my 3D prints. Right. Same thing again guys, four nuts in here. So I'm gonna go and do that. So that's done, and also two M5 nuts in these pockets here, done. So next, two steel washers, then the fuse. Okay, so fuse then two brass washers. And then there's a little, there's a little hole on here. This red silicon wire's got to go through there. Let me take this. This is the positive welding probe. I'm going to put the brass washer and then the probe. Okay, cool. And then the cover goes on with four bolts. And then I think guys, once this is on, it's done. Okay, it's done. That's it. Um, all we've got to do is connect the foot switch and there's a hole there to do it, which is pretty cool. And there we go, the foot switch is in. Now apparently, we can connect our LiPo up. So let me go and get it. She's on. I didn't see where the switch was. Where's the on off switch? Is that it when you turn it on? We can adjust the welding time. This one only does single pulses by the looks of it. Five milliseconds. Okay. It did weld at five milliseconds. Didn't make much noise. Yeah, it's pretty weak. Pretty weak. Let's go up to 10. 500 amps is not enough to weld. Okay, that made a bit of a spark that time. Ten milliseconds is looking pretty good, although I didn't get the I didn't get the information about the about the current then. Okay, I cannot. Ten milliseconds is enough. I'm gonna do some more. Okay, it's on some sort of automatic welding mode. Ah, it's on auto pulse. Right, there we go. It's automatically welding, which is pretty cool. I like, there's like a little bar as well, which goes up. So hopefully it won't automatically weld now. Right, so now it's on the foot switch. So 
So these are pretty good welds, guys. 10 milliseconds. That's enough. I really like this. This is looking pretty good. The interface is pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot on there. It does, if you put it, put it on automatic, you get like a little bar, a little time that comes up, shows you when it's going to weld. And that might be quite useful, actually, the automatic one. I might probably might use that more than the foot switch initially. Um, the, on the old welder, the automatic function, I did not like it because it was a bit random. It would sometimes come on straight away, sometimes come for the time you'd set. So that's that. Got a battery alarm. Short pulse. What's that? Percent of pulse time. So that's it. You don't get a lot of... Um... Ah, so there's a two second delay on the auto pulse as per as standard. You can turn it on and off. That's all you get guys. That is it. That looks pretty good. Let's get a cell and have a look on a cell. So guys, you should always keep your scrap cells for practicing welding or something like this. Anything that could come up. I'm going to weld to the cell with a piece of nickel. It's going to be less current to weld this. I'm going to go with seven, sec seven um, milliseconds and see what happens. Seven milliseconds. <sighs> oh, that was an effort. But I think we could go a bit higher. I think we could probably do eight. Wow. That's at eight milliseconds, guys. That came off really easy. That might be because I already welded on there before. The welds did look strong. Let me get a new cell. So I've turned the auto weld on now. Two seconds. Let's put the probes a bit closer together. Yeah. That's enough. So eight milliseconds for the nickel to steel cells and 10 milliseconds nickel to nickel. That's looking pretty good. So yeah guys, new welder looks pretty good and the old welder can probably go in the bin to be honest. I might see if I can fix it and sell it on but it's probably dead in all honesty. But no, this new Electrics welder seems pretty good man. It's obviously a lot beefier of a design. It doesn't look like it's gonna overheat like the last one did, and it looks like it's gonna make me a bit more consistent. I'm not entirely sold on the foot switch. Not really for me that I prefer to switch, but that automatic welding, the two second delay automatic welding, probably use that quite a lot. So I do have a battery to finish with it actually. Um, it's for this orange tramper. As you can see, I've welded most of it already. It's a 12S6P battery. Uh, and it's going to go in here it's just chilling at the minute i've got to finish that and i'll use the new spot welder to do that so yeah guys a few more batteries to weld um so i'll use a spot welder you'll see it in action on the channel if you're not already subscribed subscribe and hit the notification button so you get all my updates and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one guys